You have your announcements in the bulletin, but uh, I mentioned or called three. The Boston Press uh, information meeting this afternoon at five in the media center. The National Day of Prayer observance at Bethay, May 2nd at 1030. And next Sunday we will be taking off the Lord's Supper. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalms 15. These are his words. Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless, who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept bribes against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Good morning, church. How's everybody? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, amen? Amen. Hymn number 584. We have heard a joyful sound. 584. Let's stand as we sing. <clears throat> sound Jesus saves Jesus saves spread the tidings all around Jesus saves Jesus saves bear the news to every land climb the steeps and cross the waves onward tis our Lord's command Jesus saves Jesus saves Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves by his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom where the heart for mercy craves. Sing in triumph o'er the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. You may be seated. Will you bow with me as we pray together? Because we did not make ourselves, because we cannot keep ourselves, and because we cannot forgive ourselves, our Father, we turn to you. We thank you for our creation, preservation, and redemption. We thank you for all that helps us in our Christian pilgrimage, the remembrance of those who walked this way before us and did it well. Signs of your presence 
often in unlikely places, giving us to know that we are not alone. We praise you for your goodness. We remember in our prayer today those who live with a sense of running out of what they need, those who are running out of time with their life dreams unfulfilled, those who are running out of patience, wondering how long they can endure, those who are running out of help on waning powers from day to day, those who are running out of money, fighting growing costs on fixed incomes, those who are running out of love, who find it easier to accuse and criticize. Where our reserves are low, our Father, fill us again, for we would endure to the very end. Teach us what it means to live in you, to rest in you, to hope in you. Let your presence fill those homes where death has come. Bless those and help those who are passing through heavy seas with problems. And bless those and may they kindle fresh in you if they are in any way sick or afflicted. Bless us, our Father, in this hour that we may be faithful to each other and faithful to thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you're preparing to stand up, tell your neighbor I love to tell the story. As we stand, hymn number 572. <clears throat> Tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know tis true. It satisfies. tell the story twill be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story of pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God. tell the story twill be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story for those who know it best seem hard tell the 
Take every opportunity you have to tell that story. Please pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we come into your house this morning to love and worship you. Lord, we lift up this country. It is in dire need of you. And Lord, we also lift up the country of Israel. And at this time, Lord, we bring these tithes and offerings and we pray that you will use them for the furtherance of your kingdom. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You know, I was, uh, I took a walk yesterday and this thought just kept coming to my mind. Where would I be if it wasn't for that old wagon and the sound of the music? It sends out a light so that I might see and the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me home if it wasn't for the lighthouse my ship would sail no more and I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to him Jesus is the lighthouse and from the rocks of sin I shone the light around me that I might clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse where would this ship be everybody who lives around me they say just tear the light house down you see the big ships they don't sail that way anymore so there's really no use in letting the old lighthouse stand oh but let me tell you what happens oh then my mind goes back to that stormy I saw the light, it was a light from that old lighthouse that still stands upon the hill. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I From the rocks of sin, he has shown the light around me that I might clearly see if it wasn't for the lighthouse. Tell me where would this ship be? And I thank God. I owe my life 
thank you too on the front row. Thank you very much. Before I come to our scripture this morning, I'm going to read you a story that my mother and father read me many, many years ago. Daddy would read it one time, and then mother would read it the next, and you probably had it read to you. A rabbit boasted about his speed to everyone who would listen. Not even the north wind is as fast as I am. No animal in the forest can beat me in a race. Now the turtle grew tired of him bragging and said to him, We've all heard you talk, but we've never seen you run. Would you race with me? And we'll see who's the fastest. The rabbit burst out laughing. I, I can beat you standing still. So they agreed to race down the winding, winding road to, to an oak tree around the bend. In an instant they were off, and the rabbit was soon out of sight. The turtle plodding along step by step. <clears throat> I've won already, thought the rabbit. I'll take a little rest. Still beat the turtle by a mile. So the rabbit settled down. The grass was soft. The sun was warm. The rab rabbit was soon asleep. The turtle continued along slowly, passing the sleeping rabbit. The turtle was only a few feet from the oak tree when the rabbit awoke from the nap. Seeing the turtle was almost close to the finish, the rabbit jumped up, raced down the road with a, like a pack of hounds were after him. But the rabbit was too late. Before the rabbit had reached the oak tree, the turtle had been declared the winner by the crowd of cheering bystanders. And mother and daddy would always look at me and say, son, remember your lifetime through this final sentence. Slow and steady staying power had won the race. From the New Testament, Philemon 23-24. Paul is writing to Philemon, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Jesus Christ, send you greetings. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. Colossians 4, 14. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send you greetings. Second Timothy 4, 9. Do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. Our text this morning are rather three obscure ones in the New Testament, but they've always fascinated me. They're the story of a New Testament personality who is an example of the lives of many of us, including mine. His name is Demas, D-E-M-A-S. He is mentioned only three times in the New Testament. First time we see him is in the letter to Philemon that we read, Demas and Luke, my fellow workers. Here Demas is pictured even above the beloved physician in his order for the Christian cause. We know nothing about him except to surmise that he had, I guess, rare ability and keen insight. 
maybe a real understanding of the world in, in which he lived. The second time we read about him is in Paul's letter to the Colossians 4.14. Here he speaks of Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas. Demas is no longer given a position of responsibility. He's merely mentioned. And it becomes apparent that there's kind of a dichotomy of spirit within him. He's beginning to lose his warmth and his commitment to the Christian faith. And the third time we see him is in 2 Timothy 4.10. Demas has deserted me. Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. These are three points in a curve that describe the life of perhaps many of us. Demas had a marvelous beginning, but a terrible, terrible ending. And it's the story of many a human life, starting out like the rabbit and ending up like the rabbit with a half finished race. Paul and Luke were seeing this dichotomy in Demas, talking with their young friend, I'm sure, urging him, reasoning with him to no avail. Demas is lost, having loved this present world. The picture of a man with fine impulses and idealistic loyalties, but he lacked one thing, staying power. So let us not talk this morning about good beginnings with the New Year's sermon, but let us talk about the power to see things through. Dr. Harry Emerson Fosdick mentioned three things about the power to see things through. Now I've reworded his comments, but I share them with you this morning. In the first place, if you and I are to see life through to a meaningful conclusion, we must not break faith with the person God has created us to be. Years ago, a student went to a music teacher in Warsaw, Poland. He wanted to be taught. He was accepted. He became a pupil, and after the first term, Elsner, his teacher, wrote in his journal, Chopin Frederick, amazing capabilities, musical genius. What a fine beginning. But you see, Frederick had to continue this. He never once wrote music that was disloyal to the royal God had placed within him. He never once wrote music of an inferior quality. He did not break faith with himself. He did not break faith with the God who created him. You can almost see Demas and Paul walking in Rome. Rome was, I'm sure, a glittering civilization much like our own offering many opportunities and many temptations. Paul was tempted by it. So was Demas. But Demas had no Chopin in his character. He wrote inferior music, breaking faith with himself and breaking faith with the God who created him. But there's a second word if we are to have a meaningful conclusion to our lives, we must be captured by some God-given cause. In 1954, a young man graduated from medical school at the head of his class. He loved and respected everyone, and everyone loved and respected him. He had a real devotion and dedication to medicine. And once he had completed his army time, he wanted to come back 
to this country and study orthopedics. But the army sent him far away. Little did he know he would end up in Indochina. There the young doctor became involved in the lives of the people. Their suffering moved him to take up their plight upon himself, to understand their pain and their loneliness. And when his army time was over, he went to the Laotian ambassador in the United States in D.C. to ask permission to go back to that country and set up a medical mission. This was granted. The young doctor's name was Dr. Tom Dooley. He died in 1959 after a battle with cancer. And we are told that the St. Christopher medal that he wore around his neck, on the back of it was an inscription by the poet Robert Frost that went like this. The woods are lovely, dark and deep. But I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. And if we're to see things through to a meaningful conclusion, like Tom Dooley, we must be captured by some God-given cause. But there is also a third word we must have within our heart and our mind and our souls some God-given inner resources of strength. Paul mentioned some in Galatians 5, 22, 23. He called them the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Paul wrote to Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I love the movie entitled Chariots of Fire. One of the heroes was Eric Little, Scotland's greatest and best loved athlete, a theology student who committed to be a missionary. As a sprinter, he held a British record for the 100 meter run. And in 1924, Eric was chosen to run in the Paris Olympics. When he got to schedule, he told his coaches that he would not run in the 100-meter run because it was going to be run on Sunday. And he was speaking at a worship in Paris on that day. So in short time and at great sacrifice, Eric trained for the 400-meter run. In Paris on Friday, July 11, 1924, Eric had to compete with four men. Two of them had broken the world's record in the 400 meter run in the semifinals. Those two men were the favorites. A couple of things happened before the race started. A Scottish band played a stirring member with the bagpipes. And that raises the spirit of any Scotsman and it did of Eric. And then sometime, someone slipped him a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper was a note from 1 Samuel 2.30. The Lord declares, I will honor those who honor me. 
Exactly 47.2 seconds later, Eric had established a new world record for the 400-meter run and a reputation at that time for the greatest quarter miler that the world had ever seen. Eric's running was firmly rooted in his convictions to Jesus Christ. He ran not only with his legs, he ran with his heart, he ran with his soul. Thousands of young people in Scotland followed every detail of this. To them, Eric was a national hero, not just because of his great athletic ability, but because of his modesty, his charm, and the great strength of his witness for Jesus Christ. Eric married and went to China as a missionary. He died in China at the end of World War II, and the movie Chariots of Fire ended with these words about Eric's death. And all of Scotland mourned. Do not break faith with the person God has created you to be. Let your life be captured by some God-given cause. And live your life with God's inner resources of strength that you may bless yourself, that you may bless others, and that you may bless the God who created us all. If you would make a public decision of faith this morning, trusting Jesus Christ with your life and finding in him life new and life eternal, we invite you to do that now. If you would find membership in this church in any way we receive members, this body of Christian believers, we invite you to come. Or if you would make any other decision. This is the time for that, and we invite you to do so as we stand together and sing hymn number 317, Audra. I believe that's right. All right. Hymn number 317, Only Trust Him. <clears throat> Every soul by sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord, and He will surely give you rest by trusting in His Word. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him. shed his precious blood rich blessings to bestow plunge now into the crimson flood that washes white as snow only trust him only trust him only trust him is the truth the way that leads you into rest believe in him without delay and you are fully blessed only trust him only trust him only trust him Join this 
part now in fellowship with God the Father. And as you go, remember, in the goodness of God, you were born into this world. Through the grace of God, you have been kept all the day long, even until this very hour. And through the love of God, fully revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, you are being redeemed. In his name, amen.